Hi, and welcome to a brand new edition of Fearly Presents Up in the Raptors. Ah! Hey! This is cool, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, <I don't> know. <laughs> <laughs> so, we're, we've upgraded a little bit. Yes, just for a day. <laughs> yeah, we just wanted to test out how successful it would feel. It would, I know, yeah. We just wanted a quick taste. <laughs> Maybe it's because of who our guest is today. Who is our guest? Well, I, I mean, it was supposed to be you <laughs> doing oh, it. Oh, that's but right. It's, it's no, okay. I'm, I'm just, no, I'm just he is a me. former A A E W. Former since when? <laughs> TNT champion, the man that hoisted the genie belt, none other than Scorpio Sky. Oh, my friend. Your One of my friend. best friends, brother. Yeah. No, yes, yes. Scorpio Sky is going to be here uh, shortly. And, uh, in person. Yeah, yeah, not in person. He'll be zooming in, but... Um, uh, yeah, been a long time coming. We've been wanting to have him. He's been a very busy guy. Currently, right now, he's on a break. So, figured, hey, let's try to scoot you in. Can I, uh, you know, try to get you in on, a, on an episode. It's been too long. Yes. Yeah. So, but yeah, that's why it's like you know, it's off season. You know, we, uh, me and Sky, text each other all the time about Lakers off season. So we're just kind of like, you know, we're both in the same. Oh, actually, all three of us really. It's like, okay, so what are you guys gonna do? Are you gonna budge? What are you gonna do? So, you know, hopefully with this week of the well, all the news, the NBA news that's been going on. Some, yeah. finally, kind of. Yeah. yeah. I should just say when, technically it's not news, it's just more like new. <laughs> well, I really feel as if for as long as this offseason has been going on, the Nets and somehow the, the Jazz yeah. have been the people holding up this whole offseason from being such an incredible offseason. And now there's just like for what happened this week, uh, was it on Kobe's birthday? Yesterday, right? With yeah. KD? Yeah, with Katie, the news about how they met yeah, in Los yeah. Angeles. Yeah, yeah. I, I was like, I saw Los like, Angeles. You know what? Like, what's we're, going on? We're gonna move forward with everything. <laughs> it's just like for two months, you guys are deciding to like a marriage couple on the brink of a divorce. You're like, we're gonna ha- we're gonna settle this. <laughs> Tell me about it. This has been the most like back and forth since I don't know. I think I don't know. It's a long time, really, when it comes to like just a player and a franchise. You know, I'm done. No, you're not. Yes, I am. No, I'm not. Okay, we're fine. Like, what the, make up your mind. Like, yeah. to me, it's just like, make up your mind. But with KD, I don't know. Do you think KD and Kyrie still are, like, friends and, like, want to play with each other? Because I felt like Kyrie, he did tweet something that day when the news broke out. Oh, did he? Yeah, it was the Kobe Bryant gif uh, of him, or gif, whatever we're pronouncing it. Uh, when it zooms in on his face, he's kind of like at the camera like, and it just zooms in. Have you seen that? You seen but it could have been because it's Kobe's birthday. Mm. Minutes right after the, the 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 news broke out about KD staying in Brooklyn, so that's why. But but it, it could be taken both ways because it could either be like, oh, KD staying, what? Or it could be, oh, he's staying, what? Like that. I don't know. What do you so think? I probably would have to look at the tweet to know what you're talking about because I missed it. Oh. But I will say that KD staying. Maybe it's because he's like, all right, you know what? Adam Oslin said this by the way on yeah. FNA's podcast. He said. Maybe KD was viewed as the person who runs away from everything. He is. He, he does. runs away from the Thunder. He ran away from the Warriors when he was like, oh, you're privileged. Oh, you had it easy. Oh, you can do whatever you want. And then it's just like, he's like, no, I could do this. I'm going to go to the Nets. Watch me. I'm going to do this all by myself. And then he gets there with Kyrie and a whole bunch of all-stars. He had James Harden. Now he has Ben Simmons. He has a cast of three-point shooters around him. It's like everything is laid out for him. And nothing would make me feel so much happier if they just failed again. Absolutely. I would love to see that again because I don't want them to win, of course. But do you think? I mean, I don't know. I feel like with all this drama, I don't know if they can all really. I'm sure they're going to try to get along, but I feel like it's going to fall apart way more than we are. (laughs) That's for sure. I think the Nets could fix it. (laughs) You think so? Maybe if it's team chemistry is off, Kyrie's like, man, Ben Simmons, you soft. And then Simmons is like, all right, I'm done for the season. (laughs) That's what I'm saying. Mental health. <laughs> <laughs> mental health. Mental health break. I'm quitting like I did with LSU. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> oh, I forgot we could cuss again. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I had like flashbacks being in the studio again. I was like, oh, that's right. We have to be. No, no, we don't. Um, imagine I'm like, fuck KD, fuck Steve Nash, fuck all that. Uh, <laughs> it's like a Tupac on <laughs> Yeah, Go Lakers, Lakers in five. No, yeah, we're, we're going to lose in five. Um, if if Westbrook plays, but um, yeah, it, it's, it's I find that super interesting. I, I just it I, I'm hoping things are gonna start moving along when it comes to everybody else. Now I'm assuming that's what's gonna happen. But uh, you know, it's I was still kind of holding out for a Kyrie trade, but now I kind of want them to make that Indiana move. So I'm glad you got to that because 
I saw some interesting trade rumors about the Pacers. A lot of Laker fans seem to be favoring towards Buddy Heel and yeah. Miles Turner of a package. I mean, if the Utah Jazz is willing to give up, not, not Donovan Mitchell, but if they're willing to give up Jordan Clarkson, Bogdanovich, wow. and maybe a Pat Bev, maybe a Malik Beasley, doesn't that sound like a lot of rotational help players around LeBron and AD? Yeah, I was just as much as I hate Patrick Beverly, I do keep hearing that there's a good chance he's gonna like, or I think either LeBron, someone from the Lakers, kind of like poking that, uh, that uh, the Pat Bev camp a little bit. I guess I, I I don't know where it's coming from exactly, but I know I read it somewhere. But uh, I mean, if we have Jordan Clarkson back, yeah, off the bench, yeah. And there's a difference between <laughs> this Jordan Clarkson and the Jordan Clarkson when Kobe gave the last assist on his final game. Absolutely. Ever. He had way less tattoos, that's for sure. <laughs> way less neck tattoos. <laughs> okay, but I'm talking about like that Jordan Clarkson was one of the young players that was a part of the young core. For Absolutely. The Lakers, and he didn't really know. He hit the ceiling in terms of his potential. He had to go elsewhere to find himself because when Byron Scott, the returning year, told him, hey, I knew, I know you led the team in scoring, despite Kobe Bryant being on there. I know you led the team in scoring. Well, what you're going to have to do is come off the bench. He didn't want to accept the six-man role, and then now you're seeing him with six-man of the year for Utah, right? Yeah. So yeah. this is the thing. Like He knows who he is. He has a better, of identity, a better identity of himself. Yeah. So I think that would be a perfect match. I think it's perfect. I mean, he's already, you know, he's already been in purple and gold already. So I feel like, you know, he should be settled in fairly quickly when he, if he does get traded here. Excuse me. Combination burp and sneeze. Uh, yeah, so I, I, I can see that. I mean, do you think it's going to happen, though? Strong potential? I think. Do you think Westbrook, so you think Westbrook, like they're going to try to ship Westbrook? To Utah? Yeah. So if they accepted one bad contract with a point guard, such as Mike Conley, then I don't see why not. But at the same time, <laughs> I think with how hardball Danny Ainge is playing right now, yeah. where I, did you see the trade rumor okay, with the tell Knicks? Me, I did not. Tell me about that. It was Toppin, Fournier, uh -huh. and five first round draft picks. Whoa. For D Donovan Mitchell. And supposedly Danny Ainge, this is all rumored. Danny Ainge was like, that's lowballing it. <laughs> and he was like, five first rounders. I want RJ Barrett or something else. <laughs> like, he wanted five. And a car made out of gold. And this is why the Rudy Gobert trade was the fucking worst thing to start off the offseason. Because you trade four first round draft picks for Rudy Gobert. Now there's no uh, sense of like value. Like, everything has gone out the window. And can we give more credit to Palenka now for actually like not folding and not like giving in to any of those previous like. No. Why not? I'll okay, fight you. If, I'm kidding. <laughs> Even if you're in the Lakers jersey today kissing my ass. <laughs> okay, this is for Kobe Day. Oh, is it? No, today is Kobe Day. I should remind you, by the time you're watching this, you're going to be hungover. But I will say that this is for <laughs> Kobe Day and this is for... Uh, oh, yeah, well, name, name three of their songs right now. Uh, Aha! Kobe, <laughs> Bryant, Black Mamba. <laughs> okay, you could keep it on. <laughs> but I will say that Joe Von Buha of The Athletic rumored that this would be a done deal back in July if the Lakers would have gave up two first-round draft picks yeah. for Kyrie. So it would have been Westbrook and two first-rounders for Kyrie. That would have been a done deal. So now that all of a sudden, a lot of Laker fans, especially the front office, was like, oh, we should have pulled the trigger as soon as LeBron James signed his extension. You waited. You sat on that ball way too late. Yeah, that's true. See, uh, well... I felt like they had to know what I, I I think we talked about this before. I still feel like they had to know if LeBron was going to sign that extension or not in order for them to kind of like, okay, so what are we going to do? It was a Mexican standoff. Everyone's kind of waiting on everybody, pointing their guns at each other, like, okay, who's in the first one? Who's going to make the move? That kind of thing. At least that's what I feel like. If you would have got Kyrie to the Lakers, though, yeah. don't you think he would have signed it? <laughs> no, he would have been more like, I need to be traded. <laughs> I need to be traded now. Uh, I know that's a Shaq impression. I don't know why. Uh, <laughs> I need to be traded. Kobe, Kobe. Happy Kobe Day. Watch Space Patch 2. <laughs> oh, um, but I, wait, what was the question? <laughs> if I, I got lost Kyrie in Kyrie was expression. a Laker, yeah. if he was traded oh. to the Lakers, would, he, would LeBron have signed? I feel like, yeah, because that's, yeah, I guess. Maybe? I would think, I would, I would 80% say yes. I think he would have signed it on the day. You think so? Yeah. So now, well, it doesn't sound like, the, well, because right now the reason why Kyrie's not being traded is because the Nets aren't willing to trade Kyrie now. No, supposedly he's happy with the Nets. Oh, uh, yeah, because 
Uh, I don't know. I don't believe I, that, but... Uh, back to the Nets thing. I don't think Katie and Kyrie are mad at each other. I really think they're mad at the parents. Their parents? Like, oh. Cy and Nash. Oh, I thought you meant, like, their mom and dad. Like, we are, because we're angry teenagers. <laughs> I mean, that uh, probably explains a lot. I <laughs> said why they feel so privileged. Absolutely. But, uh, that's the thing. Like, what Kyrie... You did? <laughs> That's KD's impression. That was a KD impression. By the way, out of the three superstars, we'll say this. Westbrook, Kyrie, and KD. Who do you think has, like, the last... Oh, the next team will be their last team. Like, this is the final... It's we can got, even throw Ben Simmons in there. It's got to be Westbrook. No, I feel like Ben Simmons still has a lot of, like, career left. But Westbrook has to be... No, that... attitude-wise, though. Oh, attitude-wise. Because if Ben Simmons gets shipped off, like, let's say tomorrow, he gets shipped off to Utah for uh -huh. Donovan Mitchell... That, like, you have to be on your best behavior in Mormon country in order to play with another NBA team again. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. But then Westbrook, though, you actually have to play basketball in order to play basketball in the NBA uh, where they play basketball. Team so, basketball. Team basketball. So, I don't know. That's what I'm saying. Like, I feel like it, it, it has to be Westbrook. There's, I feel like he's the tail end of his career right now. He's circling the drain. There's no – I mean, he's not going to get better, right? Yeah. He could benefit – but, like, those small market teams that have a bunch of rookies that don't know what they're doing, and you can kind of, like, you know, kind of be, like, a little bit of, like, a mentor kind of thing. But is he gonna is he willing to do that? Probably not. Let me play devil's advocate. Let's hear it. <laughs> I oh, think I would pick as a general manager. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Mike. <laughs> I really do feel as if, if Kyrie... I, I think because I, if I'm a general manager, I'll pick Kyrie over uh -huh. Westbrook. But I will okay. say that... Because of what happened, a lot of what happened with the coronavirus and the fact that he decided to sit out because of his vaccination status, I think if shit hits the fan again, a lot of general managers will be like, he sat out at the wrong time. He should have been there for his team. And of course, like you have Andrew Wiggins who regrets it. Like he yeah. was like, yeah, like I shouldn't have caved. Just knowing what happened, like even though he won an NBA championship, he was like, yeah, I shouldn't have done it. I felt bad. But he's probably looking at Kyrie and that's a Kyrie is probably looking at it and like, I got a lot of heat. I almost broke up this team. What the fuck? So do you think he's just doing damage control, Kyrie? I think with him and KD, they could run it back. They'll be fine. But I also think a lot of general managers are like, he blew up Boston. Mm -hmm. He kind of prematurely blew up Cleveland. Yeah. And with the Nets, he almost sabotaged them. So KD would have been fine. None of this drama would have happened had Kyrie never like done this shit, right? Yeah, that's true. And so, like, look again. I would pick Kyrie over Westbrook, but at the same time, a lot of general managers are probably going like, "Well, if we do have another shutdown and all that shit goes down, Westbrook is vaccinated. At least he's a team player. Look at <laughs> OKC has <laughs> might, something good to say about him. He might not be able to catch the ball, but hey, <laughs> he's vaccinated. <laughs> 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 yes, I'm sure every GM's doing that. <laughs> no, J Michael Jordan would be down to get Westbrook. I I know that. Like when it came to trade, do it. <laughs> do no, it, when MJ. It came, so I, there have been rumors that like what Jordan likes Westbrook, but when Kyrie was like, "Hey, yeah, here's my list of player teams I wanted to go to." The only one that responded was the Lakers. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> but th that should be a sign. Like, the Cavs don't want you. Uh, the Knicks don't want you. Nobody else wants you. Do you think that was from LeBron though? Like LeBron went, "Hey, Palenka, we should probably get Kyrie." Oh, of course. Yeah, right. Of course. Okay. And then Kyrie's been on his apology tour ever since he's been away from LeBron. That's true. Trying to clean it up. I still feel. I feel like they could win a couple more if they really stuck their guns. If they really, you know. Well, he's got to get traded first in LA, but but I, I mean, I I, uh, I just I don't know. Like it's we, I just I feel like the the Lakers can improve as as long as Westbrook is out of the picture. Yes, I think overall. So right now it's just like, I, I they either sit him or they trade him. There's no, I feel like there's no way if he does play this season. I, fuck man. <laughs> okay, before we bring on our guests, I just want to get because again, this is a Kobe a day edition of Fear LA and we're oh, yeah, dressed Kobe up day. for the occasion. Hi Sam. <laughs> Sam is the man behind the the video cameras right there. Um I just want to get your take. We've done this before where we've talked about our favorite Kobe holidays. Uh-huh. Is there anything that has been added to the list because there's Kobe Day, which is 824. Uh-huh. Kind of the Christmas Eve to Kobe Day, which is his birthday. His birthday. Just like Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> There's uh, Black Mamba Day. 
Yes, that's April thirteenth. Di- yes, the the last or his last game. Yeah, is thirteenth? I can't remember off the top. 13th. I'm such a shitty fan. Wow. I should take off my shirt right now. You should. <laughs> yeah, you want that, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> you first. Uh, there's one that you... only if you're in Muay Thai shorts. <laughs> uh, it's a joke. But there is uh there's one that you brought up that's a very good one, the Mark Cuban one. Oh yeah, the Amnesty that game. That should be a federal holiday. Amnesty that that's like on other holidays is that like the Mar- Martin Luther King Day is that like <laughs> Groundhog's Day what level is that no that's like the the lower level of like not really caring like Indigenous Day uh, that's from everybody else as an Indigenous person because I just know could have said Columbus Day who okay uh, <laughs> <laughs> fuck that guy imagine I just start going on a rant <laughs> that Italian bastard by the way so I have a floating holiday at my work oh let's hear it and so like what you do you use say, yours for no I was just gonna I was like, like Black I'm gonna Month. use October 10th but please don't. Is there a way I could separate it from Columbus Day? Because I want people to know it's indigenous <laughs> people. <laughs> like my HR director was like looking at me seriously. What? Like, it's a joke. <laughs> I'm like, it's a joke. <laughs> I just want that day off. <laughs> I just want that Monday off. That's it. I'm gonna be hungover <laughs> because damn those Indians. Uh, <laughs> uh, the oh, the, uh, the oh, when he dropped sixty, of course. Oh. That's got to be like one of the biggest ones. Wait, top dropped three. sixty or eighty one? Or I'm sorry, eighty one. Dropped 81. That was uh, January 21st? Yes, I believe so. Because he died on January 26th. So that's Kobe Memorial Day. Yeah, because it was, yeah. It was a few days before his death. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And so, okay. Oh, and then would you would you put his death anniversary on that? Yeah. Like, yeah, of course you want to, like, celebrate his life. Because do we celebrate March of the Three King's birthday or his death day? We celebrate his birthday, don't we? I believe so. Is there ever like a death? I don't know. Ask the CIA. I don't know. How do they want it? <laughs> hey, FBI. <laughs> we see your tweets every MLK. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sure this building will get raided right now. Uh, yeah, I'm like, what you guys say? <laughs> I worked the radio broadcast of his final game, which was a highlight. That was pretty cool. I used to still have clips like John Ireland calls of like him I was like oh this is it like when he hit over 50 yeah I'm like oh I'm catching this and he kept scoring I'm like oh okay I guess this is his last bucket no I guess this is his last bucket I guess this is his last bucket and it just kept going I'm just glad he wasn't like that the like that first quarter was so rough you know since I was, cause I was there and I was like this, this is the worst like experience of my life I should have sold my tickets <laughs> I was like I'm watching my hero like just completely implode and collapse after all the hype, after all this, and then yeah, all of a sudden, just you know, he had he that that end of that first quarter, you know, he started started hitting, and he even said it too. He goes, he goes, I was trash, like I couldn't, he goes, I was missing everything, but he was I, at the end. I remember after he said, I probably would if I would have hit my shots in the beginning, he could have hit a hundred. He says, can you imagine that? How nuts that would be. That would have been. I mean, pretty nuts. let alone. I mean, I feel like his life should be a movie anyway. Mm-hmm. But like that night was a movie. And like I, I still can't like get over it. It gives me goosebumps just even like thinking about yeah. it. I mean, I cried like four times. I mean, I'm a big cry baby anyway. But that game, man, just like just reliving everything. I still have the videos on my phone, you know, from that night. And and yeah, it's like I'll keep reliving it every yeah every chance I get really with Kobe. And it looks as if our guest had just joined us. So, Mark, who is on our Zoom channel today? Hey, well, I, he's he's one of my best friends. You know, he, you see him on on TNT every week. You know, I hate to say former, but former, you know, AEW TNT champion. Former Should Genie. Ch- for Genie, we always want, we still want, we still want to see Genie. Please put your hands together, ladies and gentlemen, for Mr. Scorpio Skies in the house. Hello, hello, and and hey, you know, I may be the former TNT champion, but as I always said, while I was champion. Nothing comes between me. Oh, GD made an appearance. <laughs> Hold on, I just want to ask you real quick. Why are you like? Are you in heaven right now? What's going on? Why is it? What's up with the all white right now? <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, my future office. Um, hey. As Mark knows, I moved into this house a year ago, and it's been a very slow process because I was on the road so much, uh, and so I've been working on a lot of other rooms and so this is like the last room that needs to get done so right now it literally is just plain white walls um but eventually it, there there will be some stuff done there you go get a get a kobe bryant poster behind you another kobe <laughs> oh bryant. i actually i have a a beautiful one in the loft you'll see it next time you're here oh, okay the gigantic like it's it's the half the size of a wall it's a kobe it's a picture it's actually super dope it's kobe's face 
but it's made up of all uh, words that were quotes that he said. That's awesome. So all the quotes make up his face. Oh man, what out of all the there's so many. I mean, we we could go on day about Kobe, but like, I, there's a couple of quotes in my head that stick. Like anything specific that sticks with you when it comes to Kobe and his quotes. I mean, the guy was a machine. Man, I mean, uh, we've talked about it. I believe on this show before that like I have used a lot of him in my my life and career. And one of the things like that does stand out, and and this stands out to me right now, mostly because I used it this morning. Like I. I did not feel like going to the gym today. I've been kind of sick the last few days and just like the motivation hasn't been there. Uh, but I really wanted to go. And I thought back on the quote where he, he talks about, I don't know if you can remember the exact word for word, but he talks about making a contract with yourself. But this is the workout regimen I'm going to do. And, he, and it doesn't even have to apply to, to working out. It can apply to really anything. Yeah. But he basically said, this is the contract I made with myself. I'm not going to make excuses. I'm doing it. And that, uh, again, you can apply to so many different parts of your life, whether it be work or personal things or finances or, or working out, which is what it was for me today. Um, and, and it's just an amazing um, quote, one of many that he has and, and that he left us with. It, it's so poetic, too. Way more poetic than my favorite quote. I'm going to destroy these motherfuckers. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's like one of my favorite. I actually wanted him to write it on my forearm, and I was gonna get it tattooed so that way I could always read it. And be like, yeah, Kobe told me to destroy. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been cool. That would have been cool it, for for Kobe Bryant Day. Did you? Uh, I know yesterday was his birthday. Today, I mean, was there anything specific that like any type of like ritual or like anything that you know? Like today, I was like, I gotta whip out the eight twenty four shirt because obviously today's eight twenty four. And anything that you did specific today in honor of Kobe Bryant Day? You know, I think you and I are very similar in the sense that every day is Kobe Bryant day. Amen. You know, and it, it's been that way even before he tragically passed. I mean, uh, again, I, I just carry a lot with him every day of my life. And, and he's been such a motivating factor for, you know, my personal and professional life. Did I do anything specific? I mean, I guess my tribute to him was getting in the gym when I really didn't want to. Yeah. And I actually had a really good hard workout and you know again I, I mean i guess i have to kind of thank him for it because i did not want to go today and um you know those words rang out in my mind and i and i said the same thing to myself i said i made this contract myself by going i'm going to do this and i went and i worked my butt off and, and had a great workout and so even without it me knowing it was a tribute to kobe it was now, can we talk more about your belt, Genie? Uh, I want to like to know more. I know what inspired it, but who designed yeah. it? Was that you, like, 100% designing it? Like, were you the person that was over the people drawing it, going like, no, better, better? <laughs> were you like that type of person? <laughs> no, I wasn't over the people drawing it, but it, I did design it. Um, it was I got the idea to – well, first off, when I the night I won the TNT Championship, I had a lot of fans tweeting me, you got to do a Lakers belt. And I had the idea of doing it even before that. But once I saw so many fans like requesting it, I thought, okay, there's something there. Like I have to do it. And originally I thought about doing a purple strap, which uh, I, I had a couple of people do some drawings and it looked pretty cool. But then I thought about gold dusts, old intercontinental champion yeah. championship from, uh, I believe like 1996 or something. And it was a gold strap. And I saw someone do an image of that and I thought, okay, that's perfect. It just stands out. It's different. And then you do the blue ribbon. And so basically I, I told a, a guy that works with us named Jeff Jones, I said exactly what I wanted. He came up with a drawing. He showed it to me. I said, yeah, let's just change a few things here and there. Um, and uh, they got it made and it came out beautiful. I mean, to me, I'm biased. I think it's the best looking TN at least TNT championship Absolutely. ever. I mean, and I get that compliment a lot. It's so good. And the person that actually came up with Genie was our friend right here, Mark. Hey. Um, oh, I, I wanted, <laughs> I, uh, I wanted to name it. Uh, I didn't want it to just be a championship. I wanted it to be, I wanted it to be a character. Um, I wanted it to be something that I can talk about in interviews and not call it the TNT Championship. I can call it this or that. And and I didn't know it at first. I was like, I was talking to Mark and I was talking to another friend of ours named Eric Watson, and. I was like, I don't know, like Gold Mamba or this. And I threw a couple of things against the wall, but nothing really, really stuck. And I said, I kind of want to do something like 
that people will relate to if they watched well one if they're laker fans and then two if they were watching um uh god now i'm spacing on the name of the show that came out oh, well, winning uh, time winning time there we go and uh and it was mark he said what about gene and i'm like it, it just clicked right away i knew i was like, oh wow that's perfect like yeah. I can get cut, do interviews and say nothing comes between me and Jeannie and Jeannie and I were sitting in front first class today and blah, 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 you know, that sort of thing. Like you can do whatever you want. Jeannie and I are taking the night off. Like, and it really worked out. And the cool thing about it was a lot of fans uh, were tagging Jeannie bus in it. And uh, she, I think she noticed it, which is super cool. Um, and that just shows like the reach of pro wrestling and, and, you know, it, it's, it, it took on a life of its own. So I was about to ask you, you, you kind of answered it there, but like, what was Jeannie's reaction? Has she now sent you a follow on Twitter? Is she giving you season tickets? Like, what's her reaction? <laughs> yeah, when are we going to the game? No, she's, not, she's not giving me season tickets. Yeah, she, I would love that, but no, she's not giving me season tickets. But yeah, she did follow me, and um, I did speak with her briefly, and, and you know, she, she, she was honored by it. She thought it was really cool. And, um, you know, I was honored by the fact that, you know, I got to talk to her and, and she's a legend and, and I respect her so much for everything that she's done and is doing. And, uh, it, yeah, super cool. Right. Have you been watching the, uh, the Hulu doc? As, as I love much it. As I have. Yeah, I love it. I love it. You know, some people I feel were giving it a little bit of criticism because it was like, um, from what I've seen, it actually isn't even that different from Winning Time, you know. And I know Winning Time took a lot of heat for being, you know, off script and that sort of things. But uh, I mean, it seems pretty similar. And um, I particularly loved episode three, which means that the show is getting better, uh, which I'm really excited about. And and the cool thing about it is, it seems as it's going to come out to uh, present day. So I'm very excited to go through. Um, the post magic era, the Shaq and Kobe era, the post Shaq and Kobe era, just Kobe, um, all the way into the LeBron James, Anthony Davis era. Yeah, I, I watching the the Hulu doc versus Winning Time, it, it was kind of cool for them to confirm some of the stories, the references, you know, Monopoly or just you know Jerry Buss pulling a chair in the middle of the forum, going yeah. ah, like I, this yeah. is it, like like it's so cool to find out that all these stories were true. And, um, and and if anything, it's just more of like like uh, what's your favorite like fact check that the Hulu doc did versus Winning Time? Because uh, there's a couple like the the whole Vegas thing, like the 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 coach, like the whole uh, t- is it Tarkan- Tar- Tarkanian? Yeah, Tarkanian. That was I was like, wait, a murder? Like what? It turns out, oh yeah, like Jerry Buss was like, oh yeah, um, don't answer the window or don't you know open anything. Uh, anything that specifically stood out for you was like, oh wow, like holy shit, that was real. Well, I didn't know about the murder until I saw Winning Time. Uh, you know, obviously we were both either not even born or, or really, really young at the time. I'm spacing on the years, but, um, you know, I didn't even know about that. But one thing I did read is, is that they under Paul Westhead, when they, when he first took over, they didn't struggle as much as they made it appear in winning time. Mm. But the cool thing for me and my big takeaway from episode three, and, and I'm sorry if this is a spoiler for everyone who may not have seen it already, is that uh, they were struggling financially and, you know, on the verge of losing everything. And Jerry Buss, being the genius that he was, took the forum and went to Great Western Bank and sold the naming rights. And it was one of the first times it's ever been done in sports. He sold the naming rights of the forum to Great Western, making it the Great Western Forum, which we all remember the name of. Mm-hmm. Uh, and 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 that's partially how he kind of started digging out of the financial hole that they were in, which is, which is crazy because again, and they say this in there is he sold something that wasn't a thing like that. The naming rights on buildings wasn't really a thing at the time. And so he was so forward thinking that he was able to say there's, there's value in the name of this legendary building that we are creating. And, uh, and again, they also said it in the interview or, or in the show that, you know, it didn't sound like crypto.com arena. I'm saying that like, yeah. <laughs> you know, you hear that, you know, it's a naming right. So the great Western forum just sounded like a cool name of a, of a building. And I never knew that it was a naming rights name until watching episode three. I always just thought, Oh, great Western forum. That's the name. Sounds cool. You're watching fearly presents up the Raptors. 
He is Mark Gonzalez. I'm Zach Gallagher. Did I lose you guys? Uh, oh, we can still, hear you. We can just, hear you. Yeah, just the screen froze, but I'm sure I'll catch oh, okay, you. Oh, okay. I'm just doing like, a reset. Oh, boy. There you I go. over talked. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I talked into a freeze. Okay, you're back. Yeah, you're I was good. just doing a quick reset. Our guest is a former AEW TNT oh, world you. champion. Uh, the man that still possesses the genie. There you go. Scorpio Sky. Uh, it but hurts. It still hurts. I know. <laughs> I know. You're going to get it back. No, actually, you're not going to get it back. You want to know what you're going to do? You're going to get the world championship. You're going to get the AEW Woo! world championship. Woo! Oh, speak be... it into existence. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's speak it into existence, brother. Kamikaze everywhere. Wait, technically, if you do win the world championship, that would make you the first Grand Slam champion. He's right there. He's got one more. Man, does it oh. count now, though? Because they have, they've got trios titles coming in. Oh, that's true. Uh, so. that's and true. plus, you got to get the that's... women's title, too. That's... Oh, boy. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I don't know about that. Uh, yeah, but, that's tough. Uh, my question now, we're kind of bringing it back to present day. A lot of Laker fans are like, they want to look at the Nets and they'd be like, hey, you held up this whole offseason as hostage. Uh, now that we see KD and Kyrie kind of saying, we're going to stay with the Nets. How do you feel about that? Did you want Kyrie with the Lakers? Did you care less about it? Or do you just want Westbrook gone, period? I wanted Kyrie with the Lakers. I've always been a Kyrie fan. As you know, erratic as he is, I've always just loved his game. However, I'm not disappointed that we're not going to get him because, you know, it came with a lot of risks. And when you have, you know, bringing him on was obviously going to be an extension after. And then you have those teams where you've got three max contracts and then everyone else on the bottom is basically just uh, minimums. So that's tough which is what we have currently and we had this past season. That's really, really tough when you, you have to build teams that way. So I would love to get back to that 2020, you know, 2019, 2020 model of having a big two and having strong role players. So I, even before the Kyrie deal was dead, was already kind of mentally starting to pivot to really loving the idea of Buddy Heald and Miles Turner. And now it seems like that's off the table. So now, you know, it, the most likely, if I had to guess, was a Utah deal. And I'm not against that either. I think Utah, you know, between New Utah and the Knicks, there are some pieces there can, that can really help us. I love the idea of bringing on Patrick Beverly. I know some people are against that. <laughs> Me. But, I mean, he, he changed the defensive culture in Minnesota. I yeah. mean, that team wasn't playing defense before he got there. And so he brings a lot of intensity on the and I, and I used to be a guy that you know hated on Pat Bev as well, but again, you know he's that guy that when he's on your team you love him, and I think he can bring some defensive uh, consistency. Uh, he's a guy that can slot right in at that starting point guard position. He shot thirty eight percent from three uh, for his career, I believe. I think he had like a down year, which was thirty four, which is Steph Curry on the Lakers. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, uh, but for the most part, he's a thirty eight to forty percent three point shooter. And if you bring on like a Bohan Bogdanovich. Again, that's another 38 to 40, maybe 40 plus three point shooter, six foot seven, a wing that we definitely need. Um, if we have to take a contract from the Knicks, Evan Fournier is a guy out there. A lot of people don't like him, I understand, but you know, six foot six. And uh, again, also 38, 40, above 40% from three. These are guys that can make uh, this team a lot better than they are. And if we don't have to give up more than at most one first round pick or maybe throw in a second or something with it. I think that's a pretty good deal for the Lakers. Dude, so it's, it, I feel like I'm pretty confident. I know some people like to like, you know, criticize Palenka a lot, but I feel like so far with everything that's transpired this off season, you know, he didn't really pull any triggers. He didn't really do anything. You know, nothing bad has happened because nothing's really happened. But do you feel like more confident in his decision making now? Like, do you think he's playing chess? I've never doubted him. Yeah. You know, it's weird how like it's just, it seemed like this summer the thing, the popular thing was just to knock Rob Polinka and say he's a terrible GM. He's he's always been bad from day one, and, and it's just not true. I mean, if you really look at his moves, he's had a lot more good moves than bad moves. Mm -hmm. He's been with us for three seasons. He put two winning teams on the floor. Now the 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 championship, the post championship team. Obviously, we got bounced in the first round, but that was due to injuries. Yeah. You can't out GM injuries. That just happens. But that team was fantastic. They were twenty eight and fourteen when LeBron James um, injured his ankle because Solomon Hill dove into his uh, into his ankle. Um, you know you can't do anything about that. Anthony Davis went down for a series of games, and even with both of them out, they were still a top five defense in the league. That's really good team building. Um, the biggest mistake he made was the Westbrook deal, uh, which wasn't, you know, reportedly 
he didn't want to do. That was, you know, his original idea was Buddy Healed. It was LeBron and Anthony Davis that talked him in the Westbrook. You know, hindsight 2020, um, most of the moves, again, most of the moves he's made have been good. Has he been perfect? Absolutely not. No one is, no one's perfect at the job. But in three seasons, he's put two winning teams on the floor. And, um, you know, the, the many deals he's made have been good. I, I know a lot of people think that the Lakers lose out on trades. I don't think we've lost on any trades that he's done outside of the Russell Westbrook trade. And so, um, you know, you can disagree or agree, but I, I just I have faith in what he's done. And I, I believe this summer has gone very, very well. And it was a crucial summer that needed to go well. Yeah, I feel like overall this is kind of turning into like an episode of either Winning Time or part of the Hulu doc where we're actually watching it unfold, where it's kind of like you see the pieces in like the beginning of a story that could be, you know, a happy ending. And I'm kind of hoping that, you know, <laughs> in both ways, uh, both types of happy endings. Zach knows uh. what I'm talking about. He goes to the massage parlors all the time. Uh, you know but- what it reminds me of? Uh. It reminds me of the summer of 2019. Yes, right? Go back to that summer. Magic quit. We had to hire a new coach. The Lakers front office was absolutely getting slaughtered in the in the media. Uh, they said the Lakers were not going to win another championship. They said everything Lakers is a wreck and they've got no shot at anything. <laughs> they they hired a good coach. They and also comparison to this year, they went for a superstar, Kawhi Leonard, that didn't work out, and then they had to go to a Plan B. So it's a lot of parallels yeah. to that year, uh, and that year worked out pretty well <laughs> if you remember I, oh yeah <laughs> oh, i remember i got a hat around here somewhere yeah like somewhere oh. <laughs> yeah. like that's one thing like I, like that's one thing like i'm feeling like I, like as much as I, I you know you know you know you know me yeah i i'm lakers till i die um, but the only thing i'm trying to protect is like you know like the soul crushing of like a disappointment but i kind of feel confident this year i kind of feel like Maybe it's okay to like go all in this year in a way because I feel like they're gonna figure it out. Is that how you're feeling with this? Like, do you, are you ready to just be like, hey, it's another championship, let's go? Or do you think it doesn't like- feel like a championship? Yet. Okay, I, I will say that. And I'm and I'm really trying to think back. I'm not sure I felt like it was a championship year in 2019, uh, the 2019 heading into the 2019 2020 season. I'm not sure. I feel like I loved that team. Yeah. But I don't know if I thought, yep, we're winning a chip this year. Um. This team, it needs some work. I think these guys they brought in are going to overachieve, though. Like, I think the fact that they are young energy guys and they're the type of guys that know they have to play hard to stay in the league, you know, they're not like, uh, I don't want to knock the guys from last year, but a lot of guys from last year were like uh, lifelong, um, what's the best way to, like, kind of, guys in the league yeah just guys not superstars not bums just guys they're kind of (laughs) lifelong guys lifelong role players would be a nicer way to say it um whereas like you know if stanley johnson has a another bad season or two he's out of the league he's got to find something else to do same thing with like troy brown or juan toscano anderson like these guys don't have guaranteed jobs and i think that that's going to be a lot of motivation for them to play hard they know the eyes are going to be on them because it's the lakers you know, and I think there's a chance this team can overachieve, but there is definitely some work to do. They need to make a trade. Um, they're, they need to bring in a little bit more shooting, and I think this team can compete. I, I don't feel like there's a championship yet. I got to see what the roster is on opening night, but I definitely feel like we're a team that can compete. All right. Well, thank you so much. Sky uh, again, please follow him on Twitter, follow him on Instagram. He is a great follow. Uh, and again, watch AEW Dynamite when he comes back. He is an amazing superstar, he is the future of wrestling, especially for that promotion. So, again, thank you so much, Scorpio Sky, for joining us on Fear Life. Thank you, thanks for having me. Thank you, brother. I'll talk to I'll Lakers text you. At five. <laughs> Lakers at five. I was gonna say, you know how it is. Lakers at five. Lakers at five. <laughs> <laughs>